All right, now onto the final third um, part of the Photoshop workshop in topic three. Um, we are going to be learning how to apply filters to images. Um, this is only going to be for the desktop application because the mobile application does not have the extensive filter list that uh, the mobile app has. So back in this topic three photo editing images folder, at the very bottom, you will see images for filters. Um, they're just animal portraits. You are welcome to pick one and download it. Um, and then we will continue with our um, filter demonstration once you have picked out a picture. Um, I had already downloaded mine, so I'm going to go ahead and come over to Photoshop. Um, I have it already open. Um, again, you can do that by going to the home screen to hit open. You also can go to file open. Um, but with this pulled up, uh, what we're going to be doing is applying filters. Similar to blend modes, there is no checklist. You're just going to apply seven filters, save them individually, and put them on your module journal. Um, so the where, place that you find filters, if you come up to the menu option, click filter, you're going to see all of these are filters. We're going to focus on the filter gallery because it gives us a nice visually um, appealing gallery to choose from and kind of see in real time how things are being affected and you have a little bit more control over those filters. Um, one thing I will note, some of the filters are affected by these color swatches here in your toolbox. Um, I'm going to go ahead and click this little black and white box in the corner because that'll reset to the default black and white. Um, and you'll see how that affects it here in a minute. So I'm going to come up to filter. I'm going to go to filter gallery. Um, before I do that, do make sure that your layer is unlocked. So there's a lock box. Remember, you can just click that once to unlock it. And then click on filter gallery. This window will pop up. Um, you can expand the window or decrease it. You also can affect your zoom in this bottom left corner. Um, so you can zoom out or zoom in. And then you'll see this list of folders. Every one of these folders has a series of filters within it. And when you click on them, you will see how it affects your image. Um, and then each one also is going to have little slider bars here to kind of uh, go further and really affect the details of how those filters work. Um, really, I want you to just kind of explore in here. This is all just exposure in the workshop. Um, so pick seven that you think are great and save them. We'll do one at a time and I'll go through them with you. I'm going to start with cutout. Cutout is one of my favorites. It's just kind of got a real graphic, simple look. Um, and I'm going to kind of mess around with these little sliders until I think it looks good. And I'm going to hit OK. As noted in the lesson, this is destructive, meaning there is no clipping layer um, that goes on top of this. It actually affects the image itself and the image information. So when you go to save, um, I will note that remember the name of the filter that you use. That one was called cutout. So like before, I'm going to save a copy. I'm going to call it cutout filter. Remember, we have a lot of these saved in our um, on our computer. So as specific as you can with the name will help you to find it when you add it to your module journal. Um, and then format, I'm going to change it to JPEG. That's what I want you to get comfortable saving your finished products as. Then I'm going to hit save. Make sure it's high quality. Hit OK. Open up your history tab before moving on and step backwards one time to reset the image. Uh, you need to do that in between each filter, otherwise the image is going to get really muddy and distorted and that's not really the goal here. So once you reset it, come back up to filter. You will note now that before we went to filter gallery dot dot dot, now this, which was grayed out, is highlighted um, or it's bold and black. This is the memory, so that's going to apply the last filter that you did. I just went and undid that. I'm going to go back to filler and I'm going to come down to this filter gallery. Try to avoid this top one because it's not going to help you move forward. I'm going to click on filter gallery again and I'm going to pick something different. I really like this paint dobs one. Oh, brush size is a little intense. Make my brush size kind of in the between. It looks like a painting. Um, I'm going to bring the sharpness down so it's a little bit softer. You also could play around with the type of brush and see if you like something there. I think ultimately, the sparkle's kind of fun. I'm all right keeping it with simple. This is called Paint Dobbs. I'm gonna save a copy. Paint Dobbs filter. Change it to a JPEG. And I've been saving mine in my documents, so I'm gonna keep with that. High quality, hit okay. History, reset. 
roll it through another five of these. Ooh, I kind of like that. Angled strokes. Save, high quality, step back on the history, do another. Ooh, that one's kind of cool. This is called Diffuse Glow. Save a copy. JPEG, save, OK. Now, this is when I said that uh, those colors on your um, color swatches in your toolbox right here uh, will affect some of the filters. So under sketch, um, if you click through here, you'll notice it's changing it to black and white because that is the colors you have set. If you change those colors, um, then you'll see that reflected in this filter option. find one here. This is called Conte Crayon. I'm just going to check to see how many I've done. I have one, two, three, Edges. Two more to do. Then one more last one. Copy. Okay. Um, and now's the time that I'm going to come over to my art journal and I'm going to go to my filters assignment page. Go to my documents. Pull out all of these. All right, once these are placed, you're going to want to place them in the seven filters, and then you're going to want to change the 
filter title to what filter you used. You can go ahead and delete these areas here. And again, this is only for those using the desktop app. The mobile app just simply doesn't have the extensive list of filters that the desktop one does. So this is not a function that you're going to be able to benefit from. And once these are placed and your titles are edited, you are finished with this assignment. All of these have the right one.